Hi, I'm John, G4ABQ, and I didn't want Steve to have all the fun, so I thought I'd do my own tips and tricks, specifically for using the server in SDR Connect on Windows. So as you may have seen in the networking video number 639, uh, each platform has a different way of starting the server. The server itself comes when you install SDR Connect on whichever platform you've got. We're looking at Windows on this video where there's a very specific um, uh, command that has to be entered and what we're going to do now is create a shortcut so that you can just click on it whenever you want to launch the server in the configuration that uh, is good for you. So we're not going to go into the details of the server settings that's all in the documentation and covered in the other networking videos. Uh, also we're not going to get into the business of security and port forwarding. Wherever your server is located uh, you'll need to uh, open up the port uh, to allow incoming access to your remote server. And that's fairly straightforward if you have access to the internet uh, router hub. Um, it's a little more complicated if it's a really remote connection or a really remote site and you're trying to use a cellular network. Um, it does get very very complex but um, there are other videos on YouTube that uh, can help you through that but like I say the tips and tricks here are really just to um, uh, quickly have a way of uh, launching the server uh, from your PC. So our first example here is to launch the server with all the default settings and this little batch script is what we need to do to run that. You'll notice in it, it first of all navigates to where the SDR Connect software has been installed. If you uh, took the defaults when you installed SDR Connect, this is where it will be. Otherwise, uh, put it to where you uh, installed the software. And then the server command is this second uh, line here. So to create a shortcut, just open up Notepad. on your PC and from the attached documentation you can just copy paste and then we're going to save this as a batch file so we'll just save it on the desktop and just rename give it a name like uh, server default dot bat save okay so now if we look at the desktop we'll see we've got this uh, this batch file there which actually you can launch directly from um, there we are double click on it and you'll see that the server has launched and uh, it's on the default port 50,000 and so that's uh, that's working nicely we'll close that if you want to customize this and create a, a proper shortcut, you can. Uh, you may have to run as administrator, but um, otherwise, you uh, create shortcut. And then, if you really want to go to town, you can um, go to properties, and you'll see there's a shortcut tab, and you can even change the icon. I haven't got an icon, so it's moaning about that, but it gives you a choice from its library and you can pick a nice, a nice suitable uh, picture from the library and apply that. OK, so there it is. And it just says server default. And again, click on it and it launches. So a second example referring back to all the different server commands is we want to maybe uh, change the port which is opened on the uh, server and in this case I'm going to use port 50005 and we just uh, repeat the process so 
not sure I need to go all the way through that, but just uh, very quickly copy, paste into Notepad, save into desktop as server port 5005.bat save and there it is and if we just double click on that to launch it you'll see that the server has launched listening on port 50005 and a final example is to choose this exclusive mode which is the mode you can set which will uh, stop any remote access uh, from changing the settings that you set it up with uh, on the server machine. So uh, same thing again. We copy, open notepad, paste, file, save as, desktop, and this is going to be server exclusive whoops must remember to very important to remember as i nearly forgot there to call it a dot bat add the dot bat extension uh, so that um, it knows it's a batch file for execution and there it is at the bottom server exclusive dot bat and when you launch that, you'll notice that you'll notice this additional hardware control. Server has exclusive control over the hardware. So what does all this mean in practice? Well, it means you can choose a nice, quiet location. Um, I've got a mega loop from uh, Bonito here, right in the countryside, well away from any man-made noise, just a few sheep in the distance. And I'm making use of uh, an internet connection to connect my server. There we are. So we're now in this uh, remote building. And uh, we've got an old laptop that we've decided would make a great Windows uh, server. We've connected the um, Bonito Mega Loop to the RSPDX in this case and here already installed is our server start script and I'm going to start it up and you could imagine the setup here we just leave this tucked away in the corner of a building as long as we've got internet access uh, we can now remotely connect uh, from anywhere on the internet so here we are at the client end of things with SDR Connect loaded up and all that uh, you have to do is to go across to the three dots here and select Remote Device Editor and up will pop this window which we'll look at in more detail now. And here's that pop up a bit clearer to see. So if you haven't uh, added one before, uh, press the plus sign to add a new server. And in this case, it's John's Acer server. Um, here you put in the IP address of the remote server and very importantly, the port number that you've allocated when we set up the server, which was 50,005. We can make sure that the connection is good Yep, connection to server is successful. Obviously, you need a good internet uh, connection at both ends. So now that's set up, we can close it. Over here, we refresh the device list uh, to take the latest uh, server information. And then you'll see in the drop down, I've actually got an RSP1B connected locally, but we're not going to use that. We're going to connect to the server. And you'll notice we've got both IQ and audio. IQ is the full IQ, and, and that really only works over a very, very fast WAN, wow. or very exceptional, uh, very, very high bandwidth uh, 
internet connections. For normal use for a reliable connection, you'll need to use the audio, which is a compact audio mode, which just sends the audio signal, um, the audio bandwidth for demodulation, and of course the visual display, so that um, you still see the whole uh, spectrum. So we're going to pick the audio and play. And I've selected uh, 20 meters here. And look at this. We've got um, a very nice... Uh, hang on. Let's just uh, frame the band for 20 meters. And you'll see we've got a lovely low noise um, floor level around about the S2 or so with plenty of signals coming in that um, and there we are we can enjoy the remote uh, quiet location remotely uh, from anywhere where you have an internet connection so to check out the rest of the SDR Connect related videos, go to the SDR Connect page and there's a link to the video guides where you'll see there's an ever growing number of video guides to help you enjoy uh, SDR Connect. Thanks for watching.